complexity and complication is what what why businesses go out of business and they fail because of complexity what's up everybody my name is mason mcdonald along with my co-host dan habercost on the big picture blueprint and today we are going to be interviewing a guest that is very close to both of us. Uh, we've both done business with him. We've both learned from him and we are both friends with him. So it's going to be a lot of fun uh, getting to talk to this gentleman. But before we get into that, Dan, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm great, Mason. I'm excited to talk to our guest today. Agreed. Yeah, this guy is a legend in the land space. But mm -hmm. Dan, you've known him longer than I have. So why don't you introduce our friend and uh, we'll get him into the show. Absolutely. You know, I'll never forget when I was 22 years old, I drove out to Colorado from Ohio. Day two, I went to the local real estate group. And one of the hosts of that local real estate group was Brent Bowers. And this was 2018. And over the years, I got to know Brent pretty well. I, I learned from him uh, about investing, business, life in general, but especially about land. And Brent, I think, was just finishing as an army officer at the time. He had a wholesaling business, a flipping business, all kinds of rentals, and had recently discovered land. And I watched him build an unbelievable business around land investing. And so eventually, you know, Brent was a big part of what got me started in the land business as well. And so I know the same is true for you, Mason. So I think we're both uh, honored to have Mr. Brent Bowers here today. Uh, thank you, Brent, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I was just muting out, so I wasn't breathing too hard in the mic there. But uh, then it's hard to get that thing unmuted. So, guys, this is awesome. Congrats on you know starting a podcast. I mean, that's no small feat. It's uh, you guys are getting uncomfortable, and uh, I love it. I love seeing you guys win, and just <clears throat> all the things that that Dan's done in you know a very short few years. Um, and and then you too, Mason, as well. Mm -hmm. It's like it's crazy how fast. You guys have had success. I wish, wish my journey would have, you know, been that fast. And I just made so many mistakes. I just kept starting and stopping and quitting and getting knocked down and quitting again and just have losing faith in like the process. So uh, it's crazy how fast you guys have, have have just been so successful in real estate. So uh, I'm honored to be on here. And uh, this is well, this is you a great made honor. those mistakes for us. You know, I, I yes. think it's uh, this idea where you, you <laughs> broke my brain, Brent, whenever we first met mm -hmm. uh, at on the border across from my my hospital. And you, you know, I met with you to invest in a deal. And then you told me about land flipping and how much money you were making. And it felt like that moment from the Wolf of Wall Street where Jonah Hill was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you show me this right now, like I'll quit my job and do this. And that's essentially what happened. So you've yeah. You've educated so many people. You made mistakes, uh, so the rest of us could, you know, start running before we walked. And um, you know, so we're we're eternally grateful. But enough of boosting your ego. Um, we're gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, no, my head's so big. I need to get a better, bigger hat. Which now. I'm still waiting on that land sharks hat, man. I'm still waiting on it. Uh, hey, when when you do a million dollar deal, just call me. Like that's I'm still waiting ooh. for you to do that million dollar land deal. And I mean a million right. dollar net in profit. One, and I'll send you one, one deal. One in each I might color. have one in Florida. So actually, uh, but we, we we we'll talk more about it, man. Um, Brent, let's just jump right into it. What is the most complicated real estate transaction you've done this year? Oh my gosh. I try and stay away from complication because complexity and complication is what what why businesses go out of business and they fail because of complexity and we we want to impress our friends we want to get our business in all these funnels and tunnels and you know we like like me just trying to join <laughs> this this like sometimes things are just too complicated where it's like just give me a phone number and i'll call it um so the most complex deal is actually right now and it's aggravating the heck out of me because I call myself a lazy land investor. I want to buy the land and I want to sell it. Well, I've got multiple partners on this couple acre parcel of land off of Academy Boulevard mm -hmm. in Colorado Springs. And <clears throat> it's been dragging out for yep. years. We're going to build 34 townhomes. And like, I'm not a builder. Like Dan's the builder. Like, like I just want to sell the land. Like just someone give me a down payment and a monthly payment and you do the rest. And you know, you go out and make that million dollars. Just, you know, let me, I want to do profit, you know, land deals. You can create them 
where they're profitable immediately and forever. So the complexity is we're dealing with engineers. We're dealing with the city to get that stamp of approval. And it's just like, there's too many moving parts. And I'm just like, I'm out. I stopped, I stopped showing up for the 5 PM Friday calls. And it's just like, you guys figure this out. I'm just a small owner and I'll be here when you guys want to make some decisions. So I would say that's probably the most complex deal. Um, and I'm just going to keep it short. <laughs> yeah. Something I wanted to say, I, I really try and avoid, and I know Mason, Mason would echo this needless complexity. Making money is really simple, especially in land. And it's so easy to confuse boredom with something not working right because what works in this business is often very simple and boring. And I think what you just said really drives that point home. So kind of as a corollary, then I would ask, what does your business look like today? Are you just doing, you know, simple infill buying and selling on terms? Are you doing bigger projects? What, what does your business look like? Yeah, you hit it on the head, Dan. Um, it's, it's very simple infill lots. I'm not really buying any landlocked mm -hmm. stuff right now or stuff that's not accessible. Now, like I look for that because I, I want to grab those parcels mm -hmm. and keep them. Um, I, I'm big into hunting. I want a little postage size stamp parcel of land in the middle of a big ranch in Florida or wherever. Um, those are like my passion uh, projects to keep those for one day, maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping it so simple. Like I'll give you an example I'm buying a piece of land in Utah right now and province, uh, um, I'm sorry, Park mm. City, Utah, not province. And it's worth the, the, the realtor, my land specialist realtor, not just not just Uncle Bob that sells yep. one house a year, but a land specialist realtor that's selling land in that neighborhood, went and walked the land, um, sent me videos. He said, it's worth 550. That's the blowout price. I said, get her done now price. That's what you'll sell this for in 30 days. And I'm buying it for 335. Go. And the seller is financing me for one year at 0% interest. As long as I come up with $150,000 down, where am I getting 150? Well, I'm not taking it out of my own bank account. I'm going to use private lending. Now, some of that I'll probably have to pull about 50,000 out of my bank account, but I'm using most of that as private lending. So I've got a lender that's going to lend me roughly most of that purchase. I'm sorry, the down payment at 12% interest for one year. The rest of it is at 0% interest for one year. The, re the, the remaining 185 is at 0% interest for one year and I know I can sell this thing in roughly 30 days. So those are my land deals. Like that's, that's the, as complex as it gets. And if someone comes up with about 61% down, roughly 335,000, I'll sell or finance the rest for 30 years at 12% interest, interest only payments. And hopefully they pay me for, you know, three to five years so I can collect those payments and live off of them for a little while. Cause that's passive income and nothing ever breaks on land. You know, there's no unexpected repairs or furnaces or sewer lines that you have to replace. So that's just all like, you know, icing well, on the cake. That, that right there is taking a simple complex, simple process and playing at an intermediate and advanced level where, you know, all you're doing in that instance. And, you know, we, we try to, you know, simplify things as much as possible of we, we buy land for cheap and we sell it for more. But what you did there is you, you arbitrage the seller financing on the front end um, to list the property and then get your own financing to purchase the property to then finance it on the back end. So, you know, the seller is happy with the profit that they make. Uh, your investor or partner on the deal is happy getting, you know, 12% interest, which is better than an index fund or a savings account. And then, you know, you're going to be able to cash everyone out of the deal and then get great payments for however long. And the worst thing that happens in that instance is if they default, you know, you just take the property back. Um, and which, you know, is a pain in the butt and everything, but that, that's so many strategies wrapped into one. But Brent, right there with that deal, um, I, I want to understand more about how you got that private investor to be willing to give you that much money, the 150 K ish or hundred K ish at that interest rate, because, you know, I think a lot of people that are getting started want to, um, want to get started, but they don't have the cash to do it. So how did you get that person to do it, do that deal? Yeah, that was, a, that, that's a, I'm really glad you said that Mason, because I want to like, before you even said that, like most people don't have the cash to buy it. 
Um, a lot of people get on these podcasts and they puff their chest out and they talk about their best deals. I want to just say that I started with like garbage deals, like land that was not valuable, land that was not buildable, uh, land that was not accessible or landlocked. And it started with a $285 land deal that I flipped for 5,000 to a realtor. And the second one was for 500. And I flipped that one for, you know, 500 down. I got my money back out of the deal and 400 a month. And I just kept building my, personally, my mm -hmm. confidence, you know, paying down my debt, paying off our vehicles and credit cards and getting a, getting a robust, you know, big beefy bank account and then buying that land and then slowly kind of just snowball we could call it a snowball you start with a little snowball like i hurt my back last year building the dadgum snowman um it's amazing how heavy snow can get when you start with a little little um snowball and you keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it and that's what the land business turned into um so how did i attract those funds you know just doing just what we're doing right now getting on here and giving like the entire playbook like i don't hold anything back um, I teach people how to do this as well. Um, people pay me really good money to teach them how to buy and sell land. I make really good money buying and selling land, but it's just showing people what we're doing. Just like you and I, Mason, with, with, uh, with our road, with our land, our property in Colorado, you know, you raised those funds, um, to get that because people are betting on you. Like you're the track horse. Um, you've had a good track record. Um, but a lot of people just starting out, like, they don't realize that there's so much money out there sitting on the sidelines. The guy I'm, I'm getting this loan from, he's pulling it out of his IRA and he's making like a couple percent, maybe. Now he's going to make 12% with me secured by land and we're buying it all for less than 60 cents on the dollar. And I'm not touching his money. It's going directly to the title insurance company. He gets a lender's policy. So he's set up pretty well. It's not like being invested in the stock market where some CEO makes a absurd comment and you, you guys have probably seen this on the news with some of these companies and your stock, everything you've invested over the last 35 years and you're about to retire is gone land. that just doesn't disappear. You could do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, with it. That, that's a great point. And I'll tell you just between Mason and I, and of course you, we know a lot of people in land and finding capital is probably the biggest pain point that I'm aware of that everyone is dealing with. So it sounds like number one, putting out there what you're doing. Number two, not holding anything back as far as strategy, as far as just sharing the secrets. And then number three, just establishing a track record over time. And it's not over time then hard to, to get access to private capital. Is that a decent uh, synopsis? Yeah, Dan, you really summed that up really well. And just to keep adding to it, like Alana mm -hmm. Cohen, you know, you guys both know Alana Cohen. She went through her phone and started calling people saying, hey, I've done nine land deals and I've been crushing it. Uh, you, you guys know I'm a single mother of four. I'm looking for more funds to buy bigger, better land deals. Do you have any money? And she's just started raising funds. And the thing is, is like, you know, my first lender lent me $13,000. And I, at that time, yeah. I thought that was a huge chunk of money. And like a lot of people were like, well, what's your minimum? I don't have a minimum because let me tell you that lender that lent me 13,000 had another 74,000 to lend that I didn't even know about it. She was just testing me out. That's beautiful. And it, it's the idea that the, the worst thing that happens is people say no. And I think there's a lot of discomfort, obviously with money, you know, there's the scarcity mindset and everything like that. And, you know, you don't want to be investing with people that maybe, you know, have too many weird strings attached to it. But, you know, there, there's so much money sitting in IRAs where we just like that, we have someone funding our deal um, that we're doing a subdivide in Phoenix on uh, 250k taking it out of their IRA. And they're going to make an insane return on that money. Like they're going to make probably six figures on investing with me on that deal, which is expensive. But it's right there of going into your network and realizing it's the three F's, right? The friends, families, and fools out there that are willing to invest with you. But by having that track record and establishing it, um, the worst thing that happens that is, is that they're going to say no. Um, you know, Brent, like I do want to pick apart your coaching business and hear more about it and kind of what made you decide to make the leap from not just being a land flipper and real estate investor, but also teaching people how to do the same. How'd you get the confidence to do it? How'd you get started? Um, what do the numbers look like? Share anything and everything that you feel comfortable with because you're, you're doing life-changing work out here. 
Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, so Colin Smith, uh, Dan's partner running, running the, um, the, the Colorado Springs real estate investor association, uh, asked me to start a meetup with him. You know, I think this was back in like 2017. I was just getting out of the military and I wasn't ready for that. Like, I was like, I don't know. I'm just kind of new to all this. And Colin's like, well, between the two of us, we'll figure it out. Um, I was like, let's go. So I was really enjoying getting up there and speaking and giving back. And that also built my business too with, with people that I was selling land to and buying land from and private lenders, uh, because you're up there, you're the authority. So I was like, well, wait a minute, like, um, like the authority here, but how do I become the authority in the land business? And I was already going out to lunch with people and a lot of coffee appointments and just teaching people kind of what I was doing, just how we had met J Mason. Um, so, and I think maybe even you and I, Dan, we mm -hmm. did the same thing, but, um, you know, I had a, I had a Tom Kroll that started wholesaling Inc and I'm on the wholesaling Inc podcast. I'm one of the hosts over there. I'm the land coach. And Tom Kroll was like, listen, you know, I, I, uh, I hear what you're doing with land. I hear you're doing really well. I hear you're teaching people how to do it. How are their results? And I was like, well, I really don't know. I don't, I don't think they're really doing anything. And he's like, well, how much are you charging? And I was like, nothing. I'm going to lunch. And most of the time I'm paying for the coffee. And he goes, well, that's your problem. That's the reason why they're not doing anything is because you're giving free advice. And that's about what it's worth. Like you, if they want free advice. They can get on YouTube or go to the library. That's why they're not doing anything with it. So I immediately like shifted and Lance King was one of the first guys. He walked up to me at the, uh, the Colorado Springs real estate investor association and said, how much? Mm -hmm to learn what you're doing. And I said, a thousand bucks. I just threw it out there. I went the, the word go for no. And I think that's what, how much I charge you, Dan. No, it was three, it was well. 3000 for me, which is fine. Oh, good. I yeah. built up my <laughs> confidence by then. Thank God. Um, so I was like a thousand bucks and he was like one of my first students and then Tom mm -hmm. Robinson, and then you came along. And then, so there was roughly about 16 people that I was training one-on-one -on -one for anywhere from a thousand to $3,000. And they just started getting like massive success very quickly. I remember Lance King, like he just moved his whole entire yeah. family to Hawaii, him and his six children. Like it takes a lot of money to yeah. move to Hawaii. He lives off of his land business now. Um, but Lance King, he would call me an hour later and be like, hey, I took all those action steps. What now? And I'm like, holy crap. Like I was building the airplane in the air uh, with, with, with you guys. And you guys were all like all 16 of you pretty much had success. And I was like, okay, this is a course. So we built the course around that and then just started doing all these coaching calls and support calls. And Dan runs a couple of them a month. Uh, maybe we can get Mason on board, but like it's now a community giving back. And it's not just me teaching this, but it's like you guys that are teaching it as well and, and helping guys. So that's kind of the whole course. Like I give you the entire playbook of everything I'm doing. And obviously that has to update, you know, that's always getting updated as technology makes our lives easier. Um, but it's just about a community showing you like the steps to take and also being there to answer. There, the there's something you said I have to hit on because it's so true. So what you said or what Tom told you about actually making a commitment by paying for a course. I remember you, I had done a few land deals, but I didn't have the system. I, I learned from an older friend about new, new builds and land and learned a little bit, but I needed the system. I saw what you were doing. And you said, well, you could pay me over several months. And I go, no, no, no. I want to build a business. I'm going to pay you $3,000 all at once. And I did. And that, for me, that got me to commit. It went all, I went all in. And I think it also uh, was probably a regret for Brent because I texted him about 30 times a day. And I think he ended up making about $10 an hour there. But no, no, it's so true that that's, Paying for it up front made me commit, and I am very happy I did that. And $3,000 today is a rounding error. What's amazing about all those questions is you taught me what I needed to put in the course to answer all those Great. questions okay, ahead good, of time. Good. <laughs> well, and, and I think, you know, a lot of people will see, you know, what, what you're talking about here, Brent and Dan, and, you know, cause Dan and I both do coaching now too, which is crazy to, to know that we're teaching people, you know, different techniques and stuff that we've learned from you. And I think a lot of people, you know, and I'm going to share my screen for anyone that's, uh, you know, watching on YouTube where. This right here is called the Dunning-Kruger effect, um, assuming it's going to pull up, where the Dunning-Kruger effect is this. Uh, can you all see my screen right now? Yep, there it goes. Um, 
where it's a confidence versus competence matrix, where it's the people that are right at the beginning that don't really know anything that have an insane amount of confidence in it. You know, these are the people that hmm. will tell me or tell you or tell, tell Dan, Hey, uh, you guys don't know what you're doing. Land flipping doesn't work. I had a lady on the plane next to me that said, <laughs> you won't make any money flipping land. And I was, I was like, okay, that sounds good to me. And it's cause they know a little bit and it's, you know, they call it the peak amount stupid. And then you start knowing a little bit more and that's where you go into the Valley of despair of, you know, meeting someone like mm -hmm. maybe one of us. And you're like, how could I ever be like Brent Bowers? Like, I don't know enough. And then you start recognizing, oh, I'm getting more and more and more and more competent. And that right there is how you deter, like how you start recognizing, oh, like I can teach people of one of my students made 47,000 on their first flip. And I was like, oh crap, I know what I'm doing. Like, that's an amazing yeah. feeling. And Brent, you have made millionaires out of multiple, multiple people, yeah. but what, what for you is the most frustrating part of the coaching business and who is your most frustrating client? And don't say names because we know all the <laughs> same people, but, uh, you know, Oh, thank God you told me that right. name. No, Dan Hammer Cross and Mason McDonald. <laughs> um, no, no. The, the ones that win really quickly. I mean, that's like, I'm having success through you. Um, I, that's a really good question. I have to think about that for a second. I guess the most frustrating people, you know, I got one, you know, he's been around for several years and he's done very well in land deals and like he could do so much more and he gets shining mm -hmm. object syndrome and he goes off on like, and then he'll show back up six months later. He's like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta reignite that again. And then he asked me about 55 questions and you know, the community's, you know, lifetime. So, um, you know, another, another bunch of questions. So I would say that's kind of frustrating and annoying. He already knows the mm -hmm. answer to these questions. And it's like, he thinks that that's work. Like, okay, I'm going to start, I'm going to work again. I'm going to text Brent a bunch of questions. And it's just like, it's frustrating every time I see him coming across. Cause I'm just like, you have all these resources and you're, it's like literally like having a huge like torch and you need to start a fire because your family's freezing, but you're too lazy to like turn the torch on and strike a match. Yeah. yeah it's work for somebody, just not him, uh, to ask you questions, but yeah, I, something Mason and I have always wondered and, and just, you know, because you've done this for years at a high level, a uh, significant scale. What do you do or have you run into a lot of people that no matter what you do, no matter how many resources you give them, they just don't act on it? Have you dealt with that? And how do you handle that? Yeah, so yes, um, a lot of people, we, we call it the three D's, you know, they doubt their selves. They doubt the course, they doubt that land works, they doubt, okay, maybe only this works for Brent, um, or they get distracted. Um, and we'll just leave it at that, you know, but how I deal with that is most of the time, it's just getting the letters out to the landowners. That is that if I can get them doing that for long enough, and we, we send these, these very specific letters, land offer letters that like offer to the landowner exactly what we'll pay. If they do enough of those, it will work. It just It's just a matter of how long, how long it will take to get that first deal or postcards. You gotta get in front of landowners, do income producing activities. And some people that's just blind faith to get them to do those. And it might be coming from you know the doubt or the shiny objects, the distraction, or they disbelieve in their self. You know, maybe only this works for Mason or Dan, or maybe land is dried up. Maybe there's too much competition because I've been seeing all these podcasts about it lately and they don't send the letters and they have no clue, but Mason and Dan and myself and guys like, or people like uh, Alana Cohen or another podcast we just did. Um, the guy knows that he makes, and I won't mention his name. Um, he knows that he makes $511, $511 on every single one of those letters that he sends out. Once he, you get past that point, you can track those key performance indicators, those KPIs. Like he made one hundred fifty-three thousand dollars on three hundred offer letters, one hundred fifty-three thousand. He is never going to yeah. stop sending those letters ever again because he now knows. Yeah. No, I, I I think that's really good. I think that um, 
you know, it's, it's this idea of, I don't know if you feel this way, Brent, where, you know, you feel a sense of obligation to your clients, obviously of, you know, beyond, you know, watching videos and having all the processes, procedures and systems and everything like that. You want them to succeed. That's why so many of us do this coaching because it feels really good. You know, yeah, it makes money. There's nothing wrong with that. We all value our time. You know, that's the greatest resource and the only finite resource we have. But it's difficult whenever you see people just spinning their wheels and not doing, you know, the things they should do because, you know, it's not a magic pill solution. It's here are all the steps to do it. You actually have to do it. So, you know, if you were getting started, say you have $10,000, so you have enough to spend on, you know, a course and you have enough to spend on some marketing material. What would you be wary of when seeking out, you know, a, a land course or a real estate investing course? You know, how do you avoid the scams and how do you target the people that, have the programs that are going to be successful. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, I'm probably the worst guy to answer that because I took any and every yeah. course. Um, I didn't care. I didn't do research. Like if they said it worked, I was like, well, let's try it out. And I, you know, a lot of courses kind of just left me high and dry and I took a lot of seminars and, you know, like, where's this coach at? Like that just took all my money, like on Monday, like I saw him on Saturday, he's not answering his phone or anything and there's no support. Um, so I guess just be leery of the people that, you know, are traveling around doing these seminars because that's their full-time job. My full-time job is still a land investor. Like I've got four or five land deals I'm working right now. They're, they're literally going in my head as we're speaking here. Um, so you want to be relevant. Um, you know, I was approached to sell the land company and, I, I haven't done it because one, I'm not going to get rid of my cash cow. Like it's like getting rid of the golden goose and two, I teach it. So it feels like that'd be unethical, but three, it's like when you teach something, you actually get yeah. better at it. So what do I mean by that? Like I, I did it and then I started teaching it and I was like, holy crap, I can do that better in my business. And then I started learning from other, I feel like a double agent, you know, I get to see what successful land investors are doing all over the country. And I make a little mm -hmm. tweak to my business and, oh my gosh, like, you know, I see like Mason doing these land deals that he makes $450,000 net profit. And I'm like, well, geez, I could just go in a little bit more expensive market now too. But I didn't start there. I had to build up that confidence and the cash flow and just the lenders. Um, so that's kind of it. Like, I hope I went really long. Well, no, I question. think it's simple. You want to see people that are actually doing what they teach full time with the consulting or coaching being the side gig, not the business that they're teaching being the side gig. I think that's a, a good way to sum, sum it up. Yeah, you're right. And, and I'll tell you, my my coaching now takes more of my time than my physical land deals that I do. Now I have a team, I have a very small team that helps me. So I don't spend a ton of time today. I spent about four hours on my, my land business. That's more than usual but I had multiple land deals I needed yeah. to analyze um, in multiple states. And, um, but other times I'm spending maybe an hour a day because it's on, it's on, it's like, we built the steam. I put in a lot of hours to get well, in there. That, that, that's why you deserve to be paid for teaching it because you put the hours in, you know, it's the idea of, do you want a surgeon who has done one surgery, giving you surgery or a thousand surgeries? And it's a great model for those of you that are listening that, have experience or expertise in something, whether it's, you know, my background healthcare or in real estate or whatever it is that you're an expert at, go out and teach because you start to develop a community, which is really amazing. Um, you yeah. get to uh, get new investors. Uh, some of my clients are investors with me and, you know, I, my, me being Brent's client, we're investors together, you know, and we're, we're doing deals together. So you get to build a great community and it gives you an opportunity of, I view coaching as you know, funds to support my operating expense for my land business. So it's, uh, it, it's a really cool opportunity. But Brent, you're a family man. You're married, you've got kids. What are you teaching your kids about this world? How are you teaching your kids, you know, um, about real estate investing, about coaching, all this cool stuff that you get to do? How are you teaching them? And what are you teaching them? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really getting fun because my seven-year-old and my five-year-old are starting to kind of understand like, okay, daddy does land. You know, his teachers have no clue what I do because I show up usually in my gym shorts every morning before I go to the gym and they think I'm a bum. <laughs> but my, and my three-year-old, like 
his, here's what he tells me, daddy, you're boring. And my three year olds tell me I'm boring. And I'm like, why do you say this? He goes, and then the other two chime in because you just sit in your office. That's all you do. So I was telling my wife, I was like, Emily, I was like, the kids have no idea what I do. Like I used to love going to work with my dad. He, he built towers. He climbed towers. He was in a machine shop and like, thank God I survived that. Cause I would climb up underneath him and play with all these machines. I have all my fingers. I love to go into work with my dad, but my kids are like, they come to work with me and I'm like standing in front of this computer. So, you know, it's just teaching them how to invest their money. Like now they're getting little stockpiles of savings accounts or in their, in their uh, piggy banks. And I'm like, okay, let's buy a piece of land. Let's triple your money type thing. And they're like, no, I would rather have a Swiss <laughs> army knife. <laughs> so it's, it's been a process, you know, uh, just teaching our, our kids what we do, but they know we have all these rentals and, and the lake house and Airbnbs, but they don't see the land. They don't, they don't understand how the land makes money. They, they're, they're kind of, I, I, that's a great question. I need to get better at like explaining that whole process. That, that. That's the ultimate test of a teacher. Can you teach a seven year old the land business? <laughs> Challenge okay. accepted. All right. That could be a fun <laughs> little YouTube video, but no, that that's great, Brent. I think uh, your kids are going to have a very different perspective and frame on money and investing than most people. So that's that's awesome. You're going to have uh, some very financially savvy children, middle schoolers, eventually, I expect. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I hope they don't turn into little spoiled rotten brats. So we're doing our best not to do that. Good. Good. But you just well, being present for them is, you know, that that's the most important thing right there is you have created a life that you earned and that you deserve by not just, you know, using an using a system that just prints money, but teaching other people to do the same thing. So not only it's cool to see the, the, you know, ripple effects of what you're doing and how many kids you're positively and, you know, influencing beyond your own of, you know, dads and moms are getting to be around their kids more because this is, you know, it's an active business. You know, it takes time, you know, until you can hire and delegate and automate and everything like that, but you can do it from the comfort of your computer, which is awesome. So, um, Dan, I know you were about to ask a question. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I know we're running a little low on time and there, there's two things I really didn't want to miss. And so the, the first of those, you mentioned Park City. Brent, that's an expensive town. That's an iconic ski town. I took a trip out there this year. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you're selecting markets? Are you only going to places where land's worth half a million dollars or do you have any sort of metrics like that? How are you selecting your markets now? Yeah. Yeah. So great question, Dan. Um, so I like to keep it really simple. Like I want to talk to the people that are just mm -hmm. getting started. I like to see, I, I like to see land selling. It's as simple as that. Where am I finding this land selling? Um, and I promise I will answer mm -hmm. that question, Dan. Now I'm, I'm evolving in my, my land investing career. I'm always trying to take it to the next level. Like, you know, I used to work mm -hmm. out with you in the gym. You pushed me. Like I didn't realize I could squat yeah. so much weight. And I still remember every time I'm squatting, like what Dan told me, like you can always yeah. do more than what you, what you believe you can. Um, so I'm pushing the limits on my land buying. Um, but I didn't sure. start there again. I started with the tax delinquent land. Then I, I quickly exhausted that list and then I made a bunch of mistakes, but now I'm going where there's demand, where I see mm -hmm. land selling, you know, get on Redfin or Zillow. You don't have to be a real estate agent or a broker to do that. This stuff is free. You go to, you know, Realtor or I'm sorry, redfin.com and then go to all filters, go to sold, then go to land and look at what's going on in the last 30 days. Start in your own backyard. Well, maybe you're deployed overseas or you're in Canada. Well, then start somewhere where you wouldn't mind getting stuck with some land, you know, Park City, Utah or, you know, Colorado or Florida. Um, so that's what I recommend people just getting started. The reason why I'm going after Park City is because, or other areas, I shouldn't say just Park City, I'm just going for more bigger, more expensive parcels of land because I've done a lot of that land under $5,000, then a lot of $50,000, then a lot of $150,000 parcels. Why not do half million dollar parcels? So I'm still kind of just paving the way and, and learning this. I, I say I'm practicing real estate. I've been practicing real estate since 2007. That's awesome. perfect. You know, and the, the takeaway from there is, you know, feel free to walk before you run. 
do those buy for a thousand, sell for five thousand, or buy for fifteen thousand, sell for thirty thousand dollar deals. But all it is is commas and zeros. It's just as easy to make a hundred thousand on a deal as it is to make ten thousand. Sometimes it's easier. You know, your timeline's going to be different depending on the market and all that kind of stuff. And but it's it's just as easy, and it's just a mindset and access to capital and comfortability and everything like that. But Brent, we you know we we spent most of the show talking about land flipping and coaching. So those are two buckets that you have within your portfolio of income generating, you know, investments and activities. What else are you doing? Are you investing in single family apartments, you know, REITs? What else do you have? Yeah, so I like buying buildings um, like my office building, investing in apartment complexes, uh, investing in our nine units that we have together, Mason, because I like to take passive income which I'm generating mm -hmm. from the land or income from the land and then putting it into another income stream. And that gives me multiple benefits. Um, and again, like you, you got to crawl before you can walk and walk before you can run and then run before you can fly. Um, but the benefits it gives me is it's like my babies are making more babies and mm -hmm. those babies are grandchildren and then great grandchildren. So eventually your money just starts making more and more money. And like, I got onto you, Mason, for getting that watch that you bought. What? Like that should be another <laughs> land deal or another investment property to one day. It's like you buy the entire watch store mm -hmm. if you want to watch. Ooh, I like that. Um, so the benefits I get is it, it's, it's making more passive income, but also the government gives me a tremendous opportunity. The IRS gives me a tremendous opportunity by providing housing and buildings because they, because here's the thing, buildings, houses, like everyone's going after these dirty old stinky cat pee houses. These these buildings, as soon as Dan and I or you, Dan, mm -hmm. build a house, the second it touches the ground, it starts to rot or something eats it. Yep. It's like an apple. So the government, the IRS gives us what's called depreciation and cost segregation. So you darn near can cut your tax liability really low. Talk to a CPA. Um, also, your tenants, your tenants are paying down that mortgage. So you got principal pay down and then also appreciation is happening at the same time. So you, one day, 30 years is going to pass. You know, Dan's going to be 57 years old and he's going to have like 15 properties paid for free and clear. Well, probably a lot more than that actually. But think about that. Like you have all these free and clear properties when you're 60 years old, like retirement's not a big deal. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad we got to hit on this because, you know, I see land as a vehicle for creating an ATM machine. But I have to take that cash from the ATM machine and put it into something that's not depreciating because our currency is depreciating via inflation uh, so that 20, 30, 40 years from now, I'll have a bunch of wealth that continues to produce cash flow at an equivalent level at whatever you know our, our, our currency is worth at that time. You know, And so that that is really important that you have a strategy for taking the active income and putting it into some sort of investment and nice buy and hold real estate is the best way that I, and it sounds like you, you, you know how to do that as well. Uh, so are you actively buying more buildings? Oh yeah. Yeah. So come this time of year, I start to freak out, like how much taxes <laughs> yeah. do I owe? Yep. So it's a, it's a, it's an emergency call to the CPA. Like, what do you think? How much do we have to buy? And uh, like, like, cause at the end of the day, like who wants to pay taxes? I would rather yeah. buy a property, you know, and pay a lot less taxes. Now, again, talk to your CPA. I still pay taxes. I pay them every yeah. single month. Um, but is there a way I can lower it? Yes. It's usually buying buildings. Yeah, Makes sense. Exactly. And you know, there, that right there is, is so crucial because, um, you know, create an active business or eventually passive business that makes a lot of money and then buy things that will either appreciate in value and or depreciate. You know, it's the the truck of, you know, I bought that truck last year and that was able to, I needed one and I was able to offset my taxes by, you know, about $75,000 in tax exposure, buying a truck 0% down. So there's so many tips and tricks out there that you can use to reduce your taxes and have fun. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to treat yourself with a nice watch print. Um, and this watch ended up making me more money than I paid for it by, uh, you know, someone noticing it and uh, getting to, uh, you know, um, talk to them about real estate investing and invest in a new market. And that's not me being defensive about uh, 
the most expensive <laughs> purchase I've ever made in my life. But um, Brent, what are any questions that you maybe hoped we were going to ask that we have not asked yet? Oh, no, I, I have. I think this is a great, great conversation. I can't think of anything else. Um, I guess, you know, I'll just leave it with this, like, you know, take action. There's so much gold on, on this on this blueprint podcast, like take action, like take the time to write a sentence or two down and then don't leave the scene of that goal where you write that down without taking the action step or, you know, you better do it tonight before you watch TV or, or go to bed for the night, get like, start taking action daily. Those small wins really add up. And I'm just giving you a hard time oh, yeah. to watch. Yeah. I'm sure like, you know, I have my uh, things I blow mm -hmm. money on too. We all do. Yep. Well, Brent, thank you for coming on. This was an awesome interview. I know Mason and I have been looking forward to it, and hopefully uh, our audience will find it valuable. Till next time, Dan Habercost and Mason McDonald's, McDonald on the Big Picture Blueprint. <laughs>